On Christmas Eve the family gathers Round the Christmas tree We wrap our arms round one another Singing merrily And Father sings Little house that we And Father sings And Grandma sings Which just leaves you and me we sing, hey nanny no, frolic in the snow, I'm dead alive with a buckwheat pie, if it'll be the leaf, would you come with me? The land of cake and chocolate buns, of nibble in the door, what are you doing? I think it's a book. I'm not sure. We'll find out tomorrow. Hello, and welcome back to the forest garden. Although, I'm in the yurt this morning. It's really cold outside. There was another proper frost last night. But it's a gorgeous day out there, and there's lots to do outside. But I thought I'd take five minutes to tell you a story. Over the last couple of years here, I've experimented with making wine and cider, wine from the excess fruit that's been hit or miss, and the cider this year that was mostly hit. But my journey with making such things started when I was a child, when my dad taught me all about winemaking. And 30 years ago, in the winter of 1990, around the time that Kevin McAllister was preparing to murder some cheerful burglars, and three years before Jurassic Park, when they were still, still little teeny tiny dino embryos, we had finished making wine for the summer because there was no more fruit. And my dad had the idea of making some potato wine I said, can you really make wine from potatoes? And he said, yes, if you add raisins to them, it'll be fine. And we did. And I said, how long will that keep? And he said, oh, I'm not sure. If you, if you seal it well with wax on the top, it might keep a good few years. And the rest of the wine, I don't remember what it was like. I was probably too young to drink it. And in fact, I'm still too young to drink it. I can't really drink alcohol without it affecting me terribly. But there was one bottle left it's been in my possession for the last 30 years, and this is it. And I thought that today, on Christmas Eve, I could open it for the first time and see if it's still drinkable. Oh, I'm with me this morning. Mm -hmm is my dad. Good morning, Rob. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is a really special occasion. Do you remember this when we were making it? I do indeed. I say we made it. I probably just held something no, no, and passed it did. to you. Yeah, no, we went, we done it together. Yeah. The wax came off. Yeah. I can smell it. Yeah. Oh, give that a sniff. It, it smells incredibly sweet. It, it was sweet. I remember it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, give it a couple of years and it may. Mm. Did you think I'd have it for 30 years? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to... There's actually, there's no sediment at the bottom, so... No, well, it, it's, it um... was racked off several times to uh, remove it from the um, lees, as they call it. Oh, I've spilled a bit of sticky potato wine on my National Geographic picture book. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. I don't advocate this daytime drinking, but... <laughs> Happy Christmas. Mm, cheers. Cheers. That's actually surprisingly wow. good for a 30-year-old wine. It's, it's actually very good <laughs> and quite amazing. 30 years. If you buy a cheapest bottle of wine you know from a supermarket you'll be lucky it lasts three or four years mm. and that, that cost well that was made from potato peelings wasn't it oh, now you got me I remember the peelings yeah, going in and yeah, being amazed yeah. you could make anything from potato peelings yeah no, that is actually very very good yeah I know you're not too fond of sweet wines but I quite no, like but, sweet um, things it's delightful almost too good to drink almost too good to drink well 
hopefully that bottle will last the week at least. Yeah. Now if, that it's been if, opened. If not, just put it into a smaller bottle as you use it. So oh, I didn't think of if that. If you use half, then yeah, it's the air that will uh, yeah. deteriorate it. Now. But yeah, that's uh, really nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for well, watching, I should, everyone. I should enjoy this and then head on home. <laughs> yeah, and I shall enjoy this and then. <laughs> well, I probably better not drink all of it. Actually, I'll tip it back into the bottle. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Dad. You too, Rob. And we sing, hey nanny no, frolic in the snow, I'm dead alive with a buckwheat pie, if it'll be, won't you come with me, the land of cake and chocolate buns, nibble nibble do, the old time lord, nibble 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 do, nibble 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 do, the old time lord, nibble 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 do. If boys and girls behave themselves, they might... You can tell the amount of alcohol by how well it sticks to the side of the glass. That's it's called the tears, isn't it? Mm, it's quite, quite strong, isn't it? Yeah. Let's talk about tears at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pop that down there. <laughs> Quite amazing. Thirty-year-old wine. Kept as well as this. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call that like a? Um, what's a sweet wine called? Would it be an aperitif? An aperitif. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hmm, perhaps I won't go home yet. Oh, nice <laughs> ride. It really is Moorish, isn't it? <laughs> nice and sweet For old Saint Nick He roams the rules Of Portsmouth, Plymouth, Penge Of Staines and Stafford Stoke on Trent From Stansted to Stoke